night, a new Texas law will make it easier for teachers in the state to punish students for harassment. An update on Bear County's opioid lawsuit, plus a look at the number of pain pills that have been distributed in our area. And a piece of land that was supposed to be turned into a park years ago is still unopened. Steve Spreester joins us to explain why and how this highlights a bigger problem. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, live here in the KSAT 12 Newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Right now, the first round in the second Democratic presidential debate is underway. Ten candidates took the stage in Detroit tonight, including former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. They've discussed several topics, including immigration, climate change, and Medicare for all. CNN will host the second round debate tomorrow at 7 with another 10 Democrats, including former San Antonio Mayor, Julian Castro and former Vice President Joe Biden will have highlights coming up tonight at 10 on the night beat. Starting this fall, teachers will be more protected when it comes to harassment. Students who harass teachers will be taken out of their regular classes and referred to disciplinary alternative education programs. Sarah Acosta spoke with local teachers and parents about how they feel about this law and she explains how it will work. I've had kids throw things at me, spit at me, cuss at me. Sonia Timmerman is finishing up her student teacher training at the middle school level. She says harassment from students is something that teachers deal with daily. It's why a new law that was passed this legislative session protects teachers against student harassment. Starting this fall, the law requires students who harass teachers or any school district employee to be placed in a disciplinary alternative education program. It does put that control on the teacher's hand. Shelly Potter is the president of the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers. Previously, if a teacher was harassed, it was up to the discretion of the district on how to proceed with discipline of the student. She says teachers should feel safe in the classroom, but how they discipline a student is a delicate balance. We want to make sure that that is balanced with not becoming a school to prison pipeline. I believe that's wrong. Johnny Osborne has three children. He disagrees with the new law, saying alternative school for a one time offense is too harsh, especially for students who might just be having a bad day or a hard time at home. I believe that the alternative school is not another option on my end unless the child continues to keep doing it. Even as a teacher who has been harassed and believes teachers should feel safe, Timmerman says there are other solutions that can better protect not just teachers, but also students. Try putting cameras in the classrooms. It'll protect the teachers, it'll show parents exactly what's going on, and it'll protect the students as well. Timmerman says it's crucial for teachers not to abuse this. She says she can understand both sides. She is a special needs child and says it would upset her if a teacher wrote off her son. I would be devastated because I would feel like my son's not getting the knowledge and the help or concern or even compassion that he deserves. Potter with the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers says they'll be encouraging teachers to educate students and teachers about this new law. Myra. Okay, Sarah, so what is this process going to look like? It's going to be a combination of the Texas Education Agency regulations and also the district disciplinary process. Now, Potter says most districts also have hearing officers that will continue to determine actions on students. Myra. All right, thanks, Sarah. An update tonight on the first opioid trial in Texas happening right here in Bear County. County Judge Nelson Wolf says the county is seeking $1 billion in damages. The lawsuit was filed May 2018. It alleges fraud, misrepresentation, and deceptive trade practices by pharmaceutical manufacturers and providers. Proceeds from the lawsuit, if the county would win, would benefit treatment programs in our area. That trial is scheduled for October 2020. But just how big is the opioid crisis in our area? What's the impact been locally. The Washington Post recently got access to data from Drug Enforcement Administration records that tracks the path of every single pain pill sold in the U.S. Here's what they found. From 2000 to 2012, there were more than 326 million prescription pain pills supplied to Bear County. That's enough for 28 pills per person per year. Here's a look at the top five distributors for the drugs from that time. The list includes Walgreens, HEB, and CVS. 
The most pills were manufactured by Activist Pharma Incorporated, more than 145 million, and Neighbor Care Pharmacy Services Incorporated San Antonio received the highest number of pills at more than 5 million. The city of San Antonio has not yet filed a lawsuit of its own, but the city did release a statement saying in part, quote, the multi-district strategies of both the county and the city seek to benefit the residents of the city of San Antonio and Bear County, end quote. It is the largest water pipeline in Texas history. The 142 mile pipeline will run from Burleson County to San Antonio and will provide more water to our growing city. But that sizable project has come along with some sizable controversy. It could result in you, your SALS bills going up as much as 10% to break down how much this pipeline will cost, how it will be paid for, and how that will impact you. Brendan Gibbons, who covers environmental issues for the Rivard Report, joins us once again. Thanks, as always, for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about the status of this pipeline right now. Where is it today? It's been a pretty wild ride watching this thing get built over the last few years, um, but it's almost done. And uh, it's all going to start flowing next April. And uh, that also means that our SAWS bills are probably going to go up to start paying for specifically that next year. Okay, so let's talk about the cost because that's what's going to affect most of us, right? So what are we looking at in terms of an increase rate-wise? So back in 2015, the city council approved this rate increase that we could see next year for Vista Ridge. It could be up to 10%. So you could see your SAWS bill just go up for um, up to 9.9%. Now. That's how much, that's a maximum amount that was approved by city council. SAW says they might seek a lower rate increase than that, but they haven't said how much less yet. And when again are we expecting that increase to take effect? Likely to start um, next January, just at the beginning of the year, even though uh, they'll, they'll have to start saving up um, funding to pay for this water. Because the water, they're compelled by the contract that they've negotiated with the companies that are building Vista Ridge to they're obligated to take all the water that shows up, up to a certain amount. Um, okay. And so that's going to cost them $220,000 a day. And I talked about how there has been controversy over this. I think the first time I met you was years ago covering Vista Ridge. That's right. So this has been developing for years. So tell us a little bit of the backstory, the history of how this project even came to be. It's If you want to know, really, you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the Edwards Aquifer fights of the 1990s. But in the 1990s, there were some pretty big controversies over sharing that water, both between San Antonio and its neighbors, farmers, other cities that rely on it, but also the endangered species that depend on springs that in San Marcos and New Braunfels that flow up out of the aquifer. When there were pumping restrictions set on uh, the aquifer below our feet, the Edwards, that uh, that meant that SAWS had to start going out and looking for other sources of water to supply San Antonio as it grew. This is the biggest source that it's ever had. In fact, it's the biggest amount of water moving between river basins in Texas history. One of the huge controversies also is over how much do we really need it? Could we just get, could we get our way through that amount of water and through all the growth that we're about to experience over the coming decades just by conserving? And there are some people who think that we really could have. So Vista Ridge is expected to be pumping water next April, April 2020. So how long is this supposed to sustain our water supply? That pipeline is expected to pump for 30 years and will make those $220,000 per day payments in San Antonio for 30 years, and then SAWS will take ownership of the pipeline itself. Okay, so April 2020 is when we're supposed to see this thing come to fruition. I think another deadline to keep in mind is when SAWS will announce what the rate increase is going to be for next okay. year. Um, I've been in San Antonio for going on 40 years now. Typically, they come to city council in um, October or November, um, maybe as early as September. So that's when I would put my money on. We'll, we'll be expecting to know exactly how much our bills will be going up, and definitely I'll be covering that very closely. All right, that's not that far away. I know. Yeah, I'll be ready. <laughs> well, that's a lot to talk about with this project, as always. So thanks for making it a little bit easier for us to understand. Thank you so much for having me. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. These are some of the most captivating stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and right here at home. A mother facing charges for plotting to kill the mother of her ex and his daughter. A historic San Antonio building is now on the market, and police in Oklahoma are searching for a woman caught on camera tossing a puppy into a dumpster. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. Mississippi police say a disgruntled Walmart employee shot and killed two co-workers this morning. These people were doing the same thing that you and I do every day. Showing up for work in an attempt to provide for their families 
and they became victims of a senseless violent act. Both the suspect and a police officer were shot in an exchange of gunfire. The officer was saved by his bullet resistant vest. The suspect was sent to the hospital for surgery. Investigators say a New York mother of two put a hit out on her ex-husband's mother and his five-year-old daughter. The woman is now facing two counts of attempted murder. Her ex-mother-in-law and former stepdaughter were never harmed. Police in Italy have released this surveillance video that they say shows two teenage American suspects running off after stabbing a police officer to death. According to investigators, the stabbing happened after the two teens were approached by an officer for allegedly stealing a backpack after a botched drug deal. Both suspects have been arrested and are now in jail. One of San Antonio's most historic buildings is up for sale. The Jim Nix Professional Building was built in 1930. The sale leaves the future of Nix Health in jeopardy. Oklahoma investigators searching for the woman who threw a puppy into a dumpster. The whole thing was caught on surveillance cameras. Video shows the puppy was in the dumpster for about 15 minutes before someone crawled back into that dumpster and threw the dog back on the ground. That people would be here doing that not only to an animal, what if they treat another human being like that? Police believe the puppy is still in the custody of the woman seen in that video. A 79-year-old woman in Ohio sentenced to 10 days in jail for feeding stray cats. The woman says it all started when her neighbor moved away and he left his cats behind. I would always feed them and take care of them because I was worried about them and I'm a cat lover. When the new neighbors moved in, they weren't happy about the situation. They called the animal warden. That woman has now received four citations. She was required to appear before a judge where she received her sentence. She's supposed to report to jail on August 11th. Here at home, a longtime Edgewood ISD police officer has died after a battle with cancer. We've been following Regina Reed's story since last year. She worked for the district for more than 30 years. When she was diagnosed with lung cancer last September, the community rallied to support her and raise money on Reed's behalf. Florida beachgoers team up with rescuers to save five beached pilot whales. Tents were set up to keep the distressed mammals cool as crews worked. Bystanders helped keep the animals comfortable by pouring water over them. Three of the whales were transported to deeper waters. The other two were taken to a rehab facility. An Alaska police officer's close call with a pair of moose caught on camera. The mother moose and her baby both trip while trying to cross a road. The older animal trots out of the way, but the calf runs back to the other side. Traffic in the oncoming lanes forced to stop as the calf caught up to mom. Both animals are now okay. To read more about these nine stories, just head to ksat.com slash news at nine. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey joins us tonight to talk about those temperatures. The heat is on. The heat is on, but we have not technically reached 100, so not we're technically. still holding on to that. It'd be nice to get through July in one more day, and hopefully we won't hit 100. I personally don't think we will, but it was still a hot day today, and it felt like 100 at one point just because of that high humidity. Here's a look at the beautiful sunset tonight. Gorgeous uh, with a few puffy cumulus clouds. 98 degrees for the high, two degrees above our average, uh, and our morning low was, was pretty warm and muggy. It was very humid throughout the day today. And on the satellite and radar across the state of Texas, we'll talk about those showers and storms out near Houston, but can you see the general broad clockwise movement of the showers and storms? That's because of a high pressure Pressure system. This is our heat high that is going to keep us hot and keep us dry. But on the back side of this high out near the Houston area, there are some showers and storms that have continued throughout the day. Those have died down with the loss of daytime heating. But take a look at the difference in temperatures. Right now it's near 90 in San Antonio, but it's only in the upper 70s in Houston because of rain cooled air. Man, I wish we could get that rain, but we're just not going to get any rain uh, tomorrow either. Light and variable winds, plenty of sunshine, 98 once again for the high as we close out July. And then taking a look at the seven day forecast, you know, it's going to stay hot and humid every day. We do have a small chance, a small glimmer of hope for some showers and storms uh, during uh, Sunday and Monday, but we'll have to wait and see. Myra. Thanks, Sarah.
There is still a lot ahead on KSAT News at 9 tonight, including when it comes to fraud. Military families are at a higher risk than others. Plus, the mayor of Cibolo could lose his seat over a drug conviction from the late 90s. Those stories and more coming up after the break. Weeknights, streaming live, KSAT News at 9, cutting edge, live from the newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A new kind of KSAT. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. The day's most interesting stories in just three minutes. Expect information you can put into action. Money, it's personal. Adulting hacks. What's trending online? We're talking about it. And expect some spree thoughts. A curiosity that sometimes gets me in trouble, Myra. KSAT News at 9 on your KSAT app. April 15th is World Art Day, and our city is one great big art exhibit. But AARP in San Antonio thinks today should be your day. So connect with us at our dancing and gardening events, or explore your neighborhood. We're working with you to make it more livable for everyone. We're here in our community helping you live la vida buena. So give life a splash of color, and take on today and every day with AARP in San Antonio. Bank for a Cause today with a mortgage checking account from Broadway Bank. Together, we are making a difference. The mayor of Cibolo could be forced out of office after revelations of a decades-old drug conviction. Federal court records show Mayor Stan Stosh Boyle pleaded guilty in 1998 to conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute ecstasy. Texas law says officials cannot have, quote, been finally convicted of a felony from which the person has not been pardoned or otherwise released from the resulting disabilities, end quote. Boyle has refused to forfeit office. Now the city council will hold a hearing to decide if he lacks the qualifications to be mayor. It will take a vote of at least six of the seven council members to remove him. Now let's turn to some of the biggest stories around America that people are talking about tonight. Military families are at a higher risk for fraud. That's according to the Better Business Bureau. The BBB says military consumers report losing a median of $200,000 when falling victim to a scam. That's 32% higher than the $152,000 reported by consumers in 2018. A new Colorado law will allow 17-year-olds to vote in 2020 with a stipulation. 17-year-olds will be allowed to cast a ballot in the primary if they will turn 18 before the general election. The new rule is part of a sweeping new election law the state is enacting ahead of the elections. Lawmakers are trying to improve young voter turnout across the state, but not everyone happy about these changes. Some Colorado County clerks say implementing this law will cost the state millions of dollars. If you frequently order food delivered, you might want to hear this. According to a new study, 28% of drivers hired by app delivery services admit to taking food from their delivery orders. That's more than most people think. Just 21% of customers report suspecting drivers of sneaking a bite. According to the national study, the average consumer has two food delivery apps and uses them three times a month. San Antonio is a fast growing city, Military City USA, and the home of big events like Fiesta. All reasons why FEMA gave our 13 county region a grant for three and a quarter million dollars to help us prepare and respond to mass shootings or terroristic threats. Our Courtney Freeman is working on the story for the night beat at 10 and joins us now. So Courtney, this money 
you can make a lot of updates in our area with this funding. Absolutely. We got the list today and I was really surprised at all of the agencies and programs that will be touched by this grant. Here, look at a few of these infrastructure updates and protection, homeland security planning and exercises and preparedness. The Fusion Center will get some software upgrades. SAPD's response teams, bomb squad, SWAT and helicopter unit, as well as their TAC medic program. SAFD's response teams, hazmat team, technical rescue team. We'll also get a new medical special operations unit, which is the long term bus that you see set up at big scenes, fire or police. Cybersecurity upgrades and hiring new staff members to manage grant money. So a long list. A huge list. Yeah. yeah, and this could benefit us in so many ways. So when will we actually start to see these changes? It's a good question. So the grant was just, they were just notified of the grant in April. So it was just a few months ago, and these grants take a long time to get going. So this is supposed to be used for fiscal years 2020 and 2021. And at 10, we're going to talk to the man who oversees the Emergency Operations Center in San Antonio uh, about what most of this money will be spent on in his reaction to such a big chunk of change. All right, a lot more coming up on the night beat. Thanks, Courtney. Mm -hmm. Sarah Spivey joins us again tonight, and we want to let you know that Sarah and meteorologist Kaylee Blake here at 9, you guys get a chance to talk about the weather in a way that you don't normally see on our other newscasts. Yeah, that's true. So usually on normal newscasts, we're kind of limited to here's the weather today, here's the weather tomorrow, and that's in a story. But on the news at nine, we really get to explain the science behind the weather in a fun way. And you hear it, I hear it, the dog days of summer, right? We're in oh, yeah. the middle of them right now. But what the heck does that even mean? <laughs> I took some time to explain how the history of the dog days of summer came about. In the summertime, everybody is used to the phrase the dog days of summer, but it's actually quite interesting. The dog days of summer has a little bit of a broader meaning than what you may think. Now here in San Antonio, we think of the dog days of summer as days where temperature is above 100 degrees. It's dry. There's not much rain. But what if I told you that the phrase dog days of summer is over two thousand years old and it dates back to the Roman times. They called it Dies Caniculares, which when translated from Latin does mean dog days. And here's the origin of that phrase. The Romans, they loved to look at the stars and many people believed that the stars were actually gods and determined what the weather would be like. And so during Dies Caniculares, that's when the constellation Canis Major was in the sky. And when you connect the dots of those stars, it does kind of look a little bit like a dog if you can use your imagination. And by the way, the phrase Canis Major in Latin does mean the greater dog. And that star right there in the middle is actually Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky. So What's interesting is that constellations change their position over long periods of time. So here in San Antonio, we actually see uh, the constellation Canis Major during the winter months and in, in the fall as well, from September through April. So technically, we should call them the dog days of winter. But of course, uh, tradition holds steep. In over 2,000 years, we have continued to use that phrase, dog days of summer. And it's just fascinating when you think that we're speaking the language of people that lived thousands of years ago. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what is trending tonight with Ivan Herrera. Myra, thank you for having me. All right, three great trending stories for you today. The first one is about fresh Maine lobster coming to the town of Fredericksburg mm. for the Fredericksburg Lobster Fest. And that's going to be happening next Friday and Saturday, which is August 9th and 10th. Um, they're going to have a lot of seafood, which, you know, a lot of people love. I'm not a seafood lover, so for those who don't like seafood, they're going to have ribs, they're going to have burgers to chow down uh, on, so a lot of options okay. there. They have some VIP options, which have a lot more than your regular admission, and so if you're really looking to indulge, we have that on the website to check out those prices okay. and how you can get those tickets That's pretty for the cool. Fredericksburg Lobster Fest. Mm, now I'm hungry. Yes. So this next one might make you laugh, might also make your heart feel joy, and and it's trending like crazy on the website. <laughs> so Rotama Park Racetrack will be hosting Doctoberfest 
and that's on October 27th. And if you don't know what a Doctoberfest is, let me explain. So it's a bunch of dachshunds that race at the Rotama Park racetrack, and they're trying to take the top dog spot. And that's and if okay. you don't know what a dachshund is, that's a wiener dog. Um, so a bunch of wiener dogs just running around trying to see who's the best, so cute. the best dog. Um, so they have a bunch of different, you know, size groups and, um, and one of our um, digital content producers here actually raced her own dog, I think it was last year. Yeah, um, I see here, there, there's a link to register yes. your own speedy yes. weenie. So if, if you, you want. want to register your speedy weenie, go to our website, case. You know we needed to include that. Yes, for sure. It had sure. to be done. For sure. Okay. All right, I saved the best for last because I know you love Golden Girls. Oh, so I do. They're gonna, I really do. They're going to be having a Golden Girls puppet parody show, and it's only going to be here in the Alamo City for one day. Wow! Yes. So that's going to be happening at the Charlene McCombs uh, Empire Theater November 10th. So November you still have some 10th. time to, to get ready for it. Of course, it's going to include some of those classic moments, the cheesecake, Sophia, Rose, <laughs> Blanche, Dorothy, oh, all of your favorites. And of course, tickets will be going on sale soon. They're going to be, uh, that's going to be happening Friday at 10 a.m. So, I just love all the ways yes. the Golden Girls are still relevant. Yeah, they're still in 2019. doing everything. I'm still watching them, so I they're doing like something right. I feel like I've seen them right. all, but I, yeah. I am too. I'm with you, Ivan. Yes. All right, so tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. You can go to our website for all that information. Thank okay, you for having lots me, Myra. to check out. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. We'll be right back. 15 times a day, he would have a fit. Prior to brain balance, my son was very much unable to focus. Diagnosed with ADHD or a processing problem? Discover brain balance. Brain balance delivers on the promise of a better life for your child and your family. As we went through our first month, huge things started to happen. There was major growth in her fine motor skills. It's been an amazing transformation. Give your child the foundation they need to succeed in school. Call brain balance today. Right now, one of the big crazes in our industry right now is the adjustable beds. Adjustable beds give you the ability to raise your head and your feet, giving you more of a zero gravity feel, which means basically taking the pressure points away. Cantwell Mattress Company is one of the largest manufacturers of adjustable beds in South Texas. We actually build our own adjustable beds and offer them straight to our clients at a better price than any of our competition out there. We can't well sleep without a Cantwell mattress. We are a drill team from Hallsville, Texas. I'm the marketing director at the Chick-fil-A in Longview, Texas. Every year we do a novelty routine. Last year we were inflatable cows. Some lady posted it online, got so many views. That made the video, the cow scene. <laughs> the morning when we were leaving for our nationals competition, we surprised them and sent them off with a Chick-fil-A cow. We were starstruck. We just wanted to let them know we love them. We knew we had to make this cow proud. <laughs> Stories you can't miss. Intense video. Three minutes. The non at nine. The most interesting stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and here at home. Give us three minutes. The nine at nine. Only on Case at News at nine. This time of night, the news at nine usually ends, but not tonight. We still have a lot ahead for you in this hour long special edition of the nine. Coming up after the break, we're talking about some of the exclusive features you can expect from the news at nine. Plus, my six o'clock co anchor Steve Spreester joins me for one of those series and all new edition of Spree Thoughts next. Have you been noticing dragging doors in your home, cracks in your walls, or cracks in your floor tiles? This could be signs your foundation is sinking. Call the company you can trust, Baird Foundation Repair. Their certified specialist will design a plan to bring your home back into good shape. All backed by a lifetime transferable warranty. Let Baird help you restore value to your most important investment. Call Baird Foundation Repair today. Doing things right the first time. A family tradition. At Deskalor, it's a snap to get a desk. To get a desk chair. To get a credenza and hutch to get a bookcase and file cabinet, and much more. 
So stop by Desk Galore Monday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we'll make office furniture appear in your office in a snap. We're located at 210 Proband. I am Tracy Claypack. Jeff and I have been farming for about 38 years. Our boys came in to farm with us in 06, and Capital Farm Credit was able to work with us and help us expand our business. My husband and boys are farming land that they have farmed for the last four generations. Capital Farm Credit has been there for us, not only just with the lending and helping us grow, they actually know what farmers need. Our future plans are to continue working with Capital Farm Credit and make our future better. When we build a pipeline, safety is our top priority. Our highly skilled engineers, environmental scientists, wildlife biologists, and geologists design our pipelines to follow the safest routes with the smallest environmental footprint possible. We use state-of-the-art technology and testing protocols, so we know our pipelines will operate safely for decades. America relies on energy. We get it to you safely. We are Energy Transfer Partners. The Gomez Law Firm provides our clients more positive results. I'm so blessed to have come to this law firm. They helped me in my time of need. Had a great experience after a horrible accident. They made everything easy. I'm so happy with this law firm. They always answered my calls and questions. The staff is so nice. Very pleased with the services and outcome of our case. I highly recommend the Joe Gomez Law Firm. Thank you, Gomez Law Firm. Call today for your free consultation. 736-4040. Thanks for sticking with us for this special hour-long edition of KSAT News at 9, streaming live from right here in the KSAT 12 Newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. Tonight, we're giving you a look at some of the things that make KSAT News at 9 different than our other newscasts, including the franchises we feature on this show. Just about any day of the week, you can tune in at 9 and see one of our special segments, but it's not just the series that set us apart. It's also the day-to-day -day stories that we choose to cover. Like this one, did you know there is currently a push to get state parks across Texas more money that advocates say is desperately needed? During the last legislative session, Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill that will allow voters to decide on an amendment to the Texas Constitution. That amendment would allow state parks and historic sites to receive full funding from a portion of the state's sporting goods tax. More than a dozen of the parks that would be affected are in the San Antonio and surrounding area. Sarah Acosta spoke with an advocacy group that says this money is crucial for preservation. No one wants to go to a trashy park, so. Joshua Epstein and Theo Cupper say they visit surrounding San Antonio State Parks at least once a week for hiking. Both say they support more funding for state parks. For us to have somebody that can steadily come out here and clean would be amazing. More funding is something the Texas Coalition for State Parks says the 95 Texas parks need. In 1993, a state law was passed that directed 94% of a portion of sales tax from sporting goods to go towards state parks. The other 6% is supposed to go to the 22 historical sites Texas maintains. So if you buy a kayak or football in Texas, part of that tax money goes towards state parks and historical sites. But there's a problem with this law. The coalition says that every session, legislators must set aside that money to state parks. Right now, on average, about 40% of the money collected goes toward parks. But that can change. Governor Greg Abbott recently signed Senate Bill 26. It lets voters decide if all that money would automatically go to Texas parks and historical sites instead of having to share it with other departments. Instead of lawmakers taking that money and using it for other things, we want them to make sure it's always going to the parks so the parks can plan ahead. Jennifer Sarver with the coalition says this will help Texas parks with their budgets. One of the challenges state parks face, bathrooms. The coalition says most of the state park bathrooms are over 20 years old and need updates and more of them. And the number of visitors is high. The coalition says there was about 10 million visitors in 2017. Sarver says in order to keep up with that number of visitors, the parks depend on more funding. So without the resources to handle crowd control and to create different amenities, like we need new trails and updated bathrooms and updated visitor centers to handle all those new Texans coming in to visit. For the nine, I'm Sarah Costa. Now there's one park that has never been open because of funding. Kronkowski State Natural Area, just northwest of San Antonio. And that brings us to a series we feature exclusively here at 9, Spree Thoughts. The segment normally airs on Fridays, but Steve Spreester is making a special appearance here tonight. Spree Thoughts, these are the things that spark your curiosity. Yeah. They are all over the map. 
But tonight you're on the trail talking parks and taxes. Yeah, and the story that Sarah did sparked my curiosity. You know, the Kronkowski name is familiar. They're a very charitable organization, the Kronkowski Foundation. Well, it's actually tonight a tale of trails, some through state parks and some that lead right to the state capitol. Those are money trails and they converge at a place not far from San Antonio. In Kendall County, as you said, there is a state wildlife area that was donated in 2011, but has never opened to the public. It's a park that is parked. You ever have a friend or a sibling that asks to borrow money and then they never pay you back? That's kind of what's happening with Texas Parks and Wildlife and the state legislature. They're the ones that keep borrowing money. Lawmakers keep taking money from the state park fund to pay for other things and parks like the Albert and Bessie Kronkowski State Natural Area in Kendall County get shortchanged. Oh, it's so beautiful. It is just quintessential hill country, rolling hills. It's it's a it's a gorgeous piece of property. Just beautiful. It looks great. I've never been there. As a matter of fact, Few people have. Carolyn Chipman Evans is one of the few people who has actually seen the Kronkowski Natural Area. She's currently the CEO of the Cibolo Nature Center in Bernie. But way back when, she was actually one of the people that pushed to have the more than 3,800 acres of land that used to be the Kronkowski Ranch donated to the state of Texas. Even though um, Parks and Wildlife still didn't have a lot of money to make it into anything, they knew that it was so valuable potentially in the future that, that they took it. And there's the rub. Parks and Wildlife has the land, but not enough money for things like roads, bathrooms, basic infrastructure that you need in parks. Kronkowski Park is a beautiful place caught in an ugly situation. Carolyn says state parks that are open are very popular in Texas. As a matter of fact, they're being overrun. People are dying for land and Texas has one of the smallest percentages of public land available to any state in the nation. And we can't manage the land we have, much less open up new parks with the inconsistent funding that's currently um, happening to parks and wildlife. But as you just heard Sarah Acosta explain, there is a movement to make sure Texas Parks and Wildlife get consistent funding. The state's sporting goods sales tax was supposed to be just for parks. A new state constitutional amendment would make that mandatory. It could not be rated for other things. Again, the vote is in November. The amendment is Proposition 5. All right, so Myra, what did I learn in this tale of trails? Well, just because the state has land for a park doesn't mean the park will open anytime soon. That voters will get to decide if they think parks should be a priority in the state. And that Albert and Bessie Kronkowski were generous with their gifts to charities the Kronkowski Foundation, a huge part of South Texas. It seems a shame their generous gift of land still sits behind a locked gate. It really is because those pictures are so beautiful. We'd yeah. all like to get to experience it. So what are the latest plans for this park right now? Well, in an open land like that in Kendall County? Rare. Very rare, yeah. So it's mainly going to be for hiking and day trips. It won't be developed for camping in part because to maintain its integrity as a natural area and keep it looking the way it is. As for a timeline, still a few years away. If all goes as planned, the Albert and Bessie Kronkowski State Natural Area will open sometime in 2022. Even the state website says they hope to have it open by then. 2022. To be determined. Yeah. All right. As always, thanks for your thoughts. Thanks, Myra. We know Steve isn't the only one with questions, so if you have a San Antonio question that you would like us to answer, we want to hear it. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a page where you can ask us what you want to know about anything. We'll do our very best to get you those answers. Just go to our website and click on the San Antonio questions section under the news tab. All right, earlier we told you about how our meteorologists, our weather team, you guys get to explore different weather topics in a unique way here at nine. One of my favorites is the one that we're about to share with people. This one is, is one of my favorites as well because I'm a huge history buff and it's fascinating to figure out how history and weather kind of mingle together. And this past year was the 75th anniversary of D-Day and you'd be amazed at how the forecast played a role in worldwide history. 
The weather has played a key role in history, and 75 years ago, on the beaches of Normandy, D-Day took place. On June 6, 1944, Allied forces were crossing the English Channel, heading toward the Normandy coastline to change the course of World War II. And a lot of planning went into place before D-Day occurred. Astronomical conditions had to be just right. For example, there had to be a full moon in order for them to see the German, German defenses and where they were landing. There also had to be a low tide so that as they were coming on shore, the German defenses that were underwater would be exposed, and those were quite intricate. Astronomical conditions are easy to forecast for, and there was a three-day period where they would be right June 5th through June 7th, and Eisenhower decided June 5th is the day that we are going to storm the beaches of Normandy. But here's the thing, the weather had to be right too. And back then in the 40s, it was very difficult to forecast. Forecasting was in its infancy, but we had a crack team of meteorologists that said on June 5th, there is actually going to be a storm system coming through. So Eisenhower decided to trust his meteorologists and scrap June 5th as D-Day. They also said there would be a small window of opportunity opportunity for clear weather on June 6th and then so that was a possibility but after that on June 7th there was going to be another storm system moving through so that was out of the equation Germans however thought that it was going to storm for two weeks ahead of uh, when the Allies were planning on doing it so a lot of those Germans actually left their posts uh, from the beaches of Normandy and so Eisenhower decided we are going to catch them off guard we're going to go on June 6th and the rest is really history. On the morning of June 6th it was still pretty stormy outside but sure enough skies began to clear and the Allies were able to really uh, take advantage of the clear weather and change the course of history. Unfortunately 4,000, more than 4,000 brave Allied men died on the beaches of Normandy 75 years ago but their efforts allowed for the Allies to win the war and it's fascinating to think about how weather played a key role as well. We have a weekly series here at nine called Throwback Thursday. Now we know it's Tuesday, but for this special hour long edition of the show, we wanted to share a bit of a sample. Throwback Thursday is a series where we take a look back at the people and the places that have helped shape our community. Tonight we have an extra special throwback to share. A little over a year ago, KSAT 12 meteorologist Steve Brown retired. For more than 25 years, South Texas viewers tuned in for his forecasts and a whole lot more. RJ Marquez spoke with some of us who worked with Steve, and he gives us a look back at his time here at KSAT. Steve Brown arrived in San Antonio in 1992. From floods to storms and heat waves in between, Steve covered every weather event in South Texas. He was someone who viewers enjoyed watching, not only for his forecast, but his likable personality. He is Steve Brown on the air and off the air. He's exactly the same, and I think that's what made him so attractive to the viewers. Viewers also love those hilarious skits. I used to play basketball, you know. Oh, you did? Yeah. We got a few injuries, we could use something. Yeah. What do you, how big are you? Uh, 6'10". Six, six, well, 6'6". Six, 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 six. Steve also introduced our ears to the human tuba. <laughs> Viewers got a kick out of Steve's vegetable garden, which was grown outside the KSAP building. And of course, there was Critter Cam. A year later, what is Steve up to today? Still comes by the station once a month and he and Greg and I will sit around in the sports department and just visit and he's doing a lot of traveling, he's doing the things he wants to do. That includes spending time with his family and friends spread across the country. It's a well-deserved retirement, but he is missed around the station. Before he just started doing the 10, we went to dinner literally every night. But he was the best weather meteorologist and weather man I've ever worked, and there's a difference. Whether it was in the newsroom or on the set or when we were out at dinner, he just had this infectious laugh. Steve left a lasting legacy at KSAT and left an impact on his peers and weather family now and into the future. There's just something so special about someone, especially in TV, specifically meteorology, working in the same place for so long. His knowledge of this area, even of the people, was invaluable and so I loved getting to learn little tidbits and take little pieces of information from him. I give the powers that be at KSAT credit for not trying to hire another Steve Brown, because that's impossible to do. 
They hired an Adam Kasky that has his own style and is crazy about thermometers and is a weather geek. Steve's sense of humor and humility made it easy for South Texas viewers to invite Steve into their living rooms for years. Obviously, you got to know what you're doing, especially in storm situations. But he's also, he knew TV, and that's what made him the good weatherman. We continue to wish Steve Brown the very best in retirement. For The Nine, R.J. Marquez. Still a lot ahead on this special hour-long edition of KSAT News at 9, including a look at our Explainer series, Understand. Tonight we're talking about the right way to recycle plastics. Plus, we'll tell you about the way we try to tell you the story behind the story. That's after the break. You might hear noise in the background during KSAT News at 9. You want to know why? Our set is right in the middle of the always busy KSAT 12 newsroom. We are just feet away from reporters, producers, photographers, editors who were all working to put together the stories you see here on the News at 9 and throughout the day on KSAT 12. This is the assignment desk, really the control center of the KSAT 12 newsroom. Our assignment desk editor keeps track of all of these police and fire scanners to make sure our crews are headed out the door to see what's happening and make sure you know what's going on all around town. There's the KSAT 12 defenders tracking down the latest investigations and our weather team putting together an up to date forecast to make sure you are ready for your day. Streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom is just one of the reasons this show looks and feels so unique and we're glad you're watching. Almost time for me to go. Well, what if I... Drove me home? What if we lost track of time? What if we took a leap of faith? What if you... Missed my flight next week? The all-new RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Attention homeowners, if your AC system is over five years old, please stand by for a very important message. Are you uncomfortable in your home? Do you have high utility bills? Have you had costly AC repairs? It's because your system hasn't been professionally maintained. Call John Wayne for the ultimate AC tune-up. We'll clean the outdoor coil, flush the drain line, check refrigerant levels, and include the first pound of Freon, a $400 value, all for only $149. Get our ultimate AC tune-up, and I guarantee your system won't fail this summer. Call John Wayne today at 293-6700. For every story you see on KSAD, you can bet there's a story behind that story. More that you didn't see on camera that our reporters and photographers didn't have time to tell. They make sure that you know the most important information, but sometimes the story behind the story can be the most interesting. We have a chance to share that with you in our breakdown booth series. And tonight we are giving you an example of it all centered around a dramatic courtroom exchange. Several months ago, the case of 12 defenders told you the story of a woman who pleaded guilty in a cancer charity theft case. Investigative reporter Dylan Collier was in the courtroom during that sentencing. Tonight he's in our breakdown booth to share the story behind the story. You have information that I don't even have. The case against Vasquez was re-indicted in August. She pleaded guilty several weeks later to two felony charges. Tell the truth, tell the truth, talk about the truth, talk about the truth. Two months after, and there was still no money. The most insidious disease, the most painful one that everyone in this room has lost somebody to. You use that to get into people's hearts and in their wallets and cheat them and steal. Andrea Vasquez got onto our radar in the spring of last year. She'd been indicted by a Bear County grand jury uh, accused in a cancer charity case. Uh, she was hosting a fashion show at a swanky bar not far from our studios and uh, had promised payments to a bunch of vendors. We're talking about people that provided food and drinks that night, um, dresses that were used in the fashion show. And then months after the fashion show took place, 
the cancer charity that was supposed to get the money hadn't gotten a dime. The vendors that had provided all the food and services hadn't gotten a dime. And you had all these questions about where this money went. They had sold tickets to the event. Uh, they had vendors that had put a lot of money into putting dresses together and no one got any money. Uh, it was one of those stories that you know, we, we covered her initial court appearance. She was trying to get her bond reduced so she could be free on bail instead of sitting in jail waiting for her trial. And in most cases, when KSAT covers a hearing like that, we might get one or two tips about the person. Well, I was a victim as well, or you ought to look into this case. Have you heard this and this about her? With Andrea Vasquez, it was like floodgates opening. We had so many tips, it was difficult to keep track of them. Everything from uh, attorneys calling, I had people calling me who said they had hired Vasquez thinking she was an attorney and had paid her money for their case, only to realize later that she was not licensed as an attorney and was nothing more than a paralegal. We had people that had done business with her in the past that had never gotten money. Just sort of a similar story to what was playing out with the cancer charity case. Uh, so we put an investigation together in May of last year. And in the case of Vasquez, I had a feeling that we should be there for sentencing. And I'm glad we went because it was explosive and unlike anything I'd ever seen in a Bear County courtroom before. Ms. Vasquez. You're, you're a, a crook. People occasionally will write a bad check, a bounce check, when people wrote checks. Uh, you use it as a stream of income. It's a very obvious that that's, no? Uh, okay. I've never seen a judge react like that, but I knew, and I told my photographer this before Contreras began to address her during sentencing that he was going to tee off on her. I could see the frustration building. Uh, this is a suspect, a defendant who had pleaded guilty to two felony charges, was facing up to eight years in prison, and this was her sentencing hearing. So when you come to sentencing, you need to show remorse. You need to come in there and say you're sorry for what you did. Apologize to the victims and hope that the judge doesn't give you the full sentence and fall somewhere towards the lower end. Vasquez was a defendant who came in and immediately said she'd done nothing wrong. She started blaming her teenage daughter and said it was a foundation run by a, a then 16 year old that was responsible for no one getting paid. And you know what the most, the most offensive, disgusting part of this whole proceeding is? Is that your responses if I did anything wrong, it was not watching what my daughter did. That is the exact opposite of what you should do when you come into a courtroom. And I think Contreras seized on that, and that's the basis for why he went after her the way that he did. There's probably been three or four in my time at KSAT where uh, we've done an initial story, either before the indictment has come out or shortly after the person was indicted, and then done a final story once they go to sentencing, but there was just something about this one that told me you need to be in that courtroom when she shows up in early November, and I'm glad we were there. On the News at 9, we not only get the opportunity to tell you the story behind the story, we also get a chance to go a little bit more in depth with topics. We have the time to explain why they're important, and we also put them into context. We do this through our Understand series. That's where we've explained topics like hemp, vaccines, even the crisis in Venezuela. Tonight, we're talking about recycling the right way. Not just straws, but all disposable plastics. They sit in the landfill just about forever. Forever. It's a daunting thought. You're probably asking yourself, why can't straws be recycled? And what are the rules about other plastics that we all throw out? Sarah Acosta spoke with the San Antonio Waste Management about the fate of your plastic goods. She helps us understand how to recycle the right way. Almost every item is recyclable in some form or another, but the really question is, is acceptable in our program. It's not that straws or small plastic items aren't recyclable. It's whether or not it's processable. Josephine Valencia with the San Antonio Waste Management says if you throw straws into your San Antonio recycling bin, they will end up in the dump for a very long time. We believe that it could be up to 500 years or more before a straw would actually break down. So why aren't straws or other plastics processable? 
Valencia says it's because they are too light and get blown away or simply just too small. The recycling facility is set up to capture materials of a certain size, such as bottles and cans. So the little straws and little bottle caps and even tiny little pieces of shredded paper tend to fall through the cracks in the machinery, tend to get stuck. Valencia says anything smaller than two inches can fall through the machinery and damage it. Local groups like the San Antonio Zoo have decided to do away with straws and use eco-friendly biodegradable paper products to help lessen the amount of waste that goes out into the environment. Valencia says paper straws or any biodegradable eco-friendly paper products can't be recycled locally, so don't put them in your blue bins. But she said they can be composted, so put them in your green carts. Any plastic bigger than two inches or styrofoam objects, egg crates, plastic trays, styrofoam cups can be recycled. She says plastic bags can also be recycled as long as you bunch several clean bags into a big bag. Single plastic bags can get tangled in machinery. For The Nine, I'm Sarah Acosta. Tonight, we've given you a taste of what you can expect Monday through Friday on KSAT News at 9. Most days, you can't watch us on ABC or KSAT 12. This is a digital newscast, meaning the show is streamed. Sarah Spivey breaks down the ways that you can tune in on our streaming app, KSAT TV. KSAT's News at 9 is our first all-digital show produced by KSAT. What does all-digital mean? It means that you can watch it without a cable subscription in three different ways. So let's say you're out of town and you want to keep up with the local news and weather, or you're calling it a day and sitting in bed with your smartphone. You can watch KSAT's News at 9 by going to our KSAT News app and live streaming it right there. Or if you don't even have a smartphone or want another way to watch it, you can do that on your desktop computer or your laptop by going to ksat.com and clicking live streaming, which will be at the top of the page. Now the third way to watch KSAT's News at 9 is by utilizing a streaming device. There are all kinds of streaming devices, but I'm going to show you how to set up three of them. Three of the most popular streaming devices are Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire Stick or Fire TV. All of these streaming devices will come with a set of instructions that are very easy to follow, but there are typically three things that you need to start streaming. First is an internet connection, like Wi-Fi. The second would be a power source, like this cable here, and an HDMI cord, like this cable here. And again, most of these streaming devices come with this and specific instructions, and modern TVs are usually equipped to handle streaming devices as well. The next step is installing the KSAT TV app to those streaming devices, and that looks different for each device. You'll go to their app store, which looks like this. Click the app store. This is where excellence happens. This is Top Tier. The University of Texas at San Antonio. Apply now. When you're in Port Aransas, it's how you experience the island life. Homeowners, are you tired of low water pressure, being scalded in the shower when someone flushes, or had expensive leaks in your pipes? I'm Jeff Butler, owner of Repipe Specialists. We eliminate all these problems by repiping your home with Nupex pipes. We repipe most homes in just one or two days, plus we'll patch your walls and give you a lifetime guarantee. We've completed over 30,000 repipes and can help you too. Call us today for a free estimate to get great water pressure and no more leaks. Hi, I'm Daniel Baldwin, and I'm a drug addict, but I've been sober for years. Every day I get emails from parents concerned about their son or daughter. Is this the time they're going to go to jail, or even worse, die? It doesn't have to be that way. Best decision I ever made, calling sober. My son's got over two years clean now. I no longer worry about the phone, except if he has to say, I love you, Dad. You're going to be a grandfather. Sober Recovery Center. Call or text today for help. Freedom awaits. The most advanced piece of equipment never saved anybody. A big
That's all our time here on KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. The Night Beat starts right now.